This is Viterbi Voices. Coming to you from the University of Southern California Viterbi School of Engineering. We're here to give you the inside scoop about research, classes, student life, and so much more. All of these shared from our students, faculty, and other members of our USC community. Welcome back into the Turby Voices. I am co-host. My name is Paul Ledesma, Director of Undergraduate Admission here at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. And my name is Emily Powis, a senior studying biomedical engineering. Welcome back, Emily. Here we are with part two, our long-awaited part two of the Kristen Sayuni alumna episode. Uh, I always want to say, it's so there, everyone should know that there is, you get this weird all the time. I feel like I always have to correct people. So I have this like impetus to do it right now. Alumni is plural. Alumnus is singular. Alumna is single female. Alumne is plural. That's it. That's our, that's our Greek. Is that Greek or Latin? Uh, I don't you know. know. You asked the on. wrong person. You're, you're, come on. You haven't taken your classics course yet. Anyway, oh, no. people are always like, oh, I'm an alumni. No, you're not. You're an alumnus. <laughs> come on, get it straight. <laughs> <laughs> alumni is plural. Uh, or if you, if you want to get, it actually is Greek. So you go to alumni, 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 alumna, um, Anyway, that's my little like side lesson. That's your grammar. Yeah. Grammar lesson of the day. <laughs> yeah. It, it bugs me when I see it in writing. So I felt like I had to say, it. but Kristen Sayuni, a fantastic alumna of the institution graduated uh, with her degree in industrial and systems engineering, eventually with her PhD in industrial engineering. This is part two of our episode. If you haven't listened to part one, I recommend to go back to hear the whole story, which is last week's episode. Part two kicks off with her journey at Apple. As I teased last week, we get into a lot of stuff with Apple about corporate culture, about how she's found her culture. And also a tangent that I that I think goes really deep, but I think is really helpful about self-care, about mm-hmm. wellness, about its relationship to a job, relationship to yourself, relationship to school, how to take care of yourself, uh, what you might need. And the tease that I had, if you hung around for last week on the end of part one, which was we get a tease into what her side hustle is. Uh, and it, it, the key word is hustle so be on be on the lookout for that and maybe it's something you, you might even see her in uh out there so that's oh. that's a, that's a quick tease it's it's exciting so why don't we get out of the way and hand it straight over to part two of our conversation with alumna Kristen Saeed. yeah and i and again i know there's there's treading on weird water here, but is there anything you can tell us about what you're doing now? Yeah, or probably not. Oh, there is. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I can't tell you about product features and such, of but uh, well, cause my favorite part, this is just me as, as, yeah. as Apple fanboy here, you are um, basically describing like everything on my desk in front of me. Yeah. Like you, you're like, then I do that. And I'm like, that's right there. Then I do that. Then that's right there. And then that's right there. And then like, I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. I got, I got all these things here. Uh-huh. Yeah. What else, what else, what else, what else you got? <laughs> It, uh, yeah, coming to my house is a bit like Willy Wonka's factory for the for the fanboys. Um, I bet. And a friend who was a huge fanboy, and he's like, I, you know, I want. I was like, no, you can't see because I have prototype hiding. Exactly. Um, or not prototypes, like you know, all kinds of stuff. Now that we're working from home, um, I can tell this. I can tell the story because I won't tell who it was. But I remember yeah. someone who worked at Apple, no longer works at Apple, and we're at an event, and USC alums were there, and we're talking. And I was like, I know you can't tell me anything, but like, what's going on? And he's like. Well, I do have this prototype and he pulls out <laughs> this prototype and he's got his real phone, like his phone is using and then the prototype yeah. phone. And I was like, wow, cool. And there's not, you can't see anything. He wouldn't turn yeah. on for me. Like it was, he was being very, very secure, very respectful thing. But the best part about it, I was like, wow. And I kind of, I kind of like reach a little bit and he goes, pulls his hand back. He's like, Don't. you're not allowed to touch it. I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then it was like, I'm like, I hit, and there's another Apple employee there that starts hitting on like all these things that you guys have to do to keep things secret. And I, fully respect that. I just find yeah. it, I'm not, criti- I'm not critical of this. I just find it fascinating and even more fanboyish, if that makes any sense. Like I'm so excited about the secrecy. Yeah. Like, like, I just yeah. want to know about the secrecy. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, everything is secret. Um, and, and we do like, a, uh, oh, what do we call them? Like, like spoof devices, right? Like what this, what yeah, this gentleman had, right? Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. so like I carry stuff that, that, 
you wouldn't probably know, but I'm testing like a future feature or a material or something like that. Right. Um, and so once somebody looked at something, they were like, that looks funny. And I was like, huh, let's be dirty, right? Like it was a new like optical coating for the front <laughs> of the glass. And I was like, shit, how did you notice that? Um, a really funny story. This, is, this isn't my device or something I worked on, but before we did Face ID, uh, yeah. that's what we call it, right? Uh, yeah. We have secret codings uh, that aren't the public codings. I get it. Yeah, so you, you work in that environment so much more than all of us operate like in we like have two, what we end up seeing. Yeah, yeah, two that's, languages. I get it. I get it. Um, and so a friend of mine, uh, she had a prototype device. And so they had to, again, spoof it, right? So yeah. on her phone, she had the hardware and the software, but it didn't have the like, you know, the mm-hmm. notch cut out and stuff. And what they were trying to do is figure out, um, when you look at your phone, can you get in the right, you have to be a certain distance and the framing and such so right, that it would right, recognize right. your features and then unlock the phone. And so she had software running on her phone, which is like anytime the phone was picked up, you know, there's a gyro in there that knows that it's being yeah. picked up and, and it would turn on the camera um, and, and look and, and record it. She found out that the guy she was seeing was looking at her phone because it would then send the images back. like, you know, you would get, it would record the image. It, it, it's taking pictures of whoever's looking at the phone. So can you imagine finding like, out that like somebody snooping like on he, your phone while you're touching just, like. He was picking up the phone to like snoop and be like one yeah. of those guys. And yeah. she finds and she out because. Because she had like this, and she couldn't tell, you know, like, plus why would you tell somebody like, oh, I have this like top secret. Like, yeah, it's not wild. Okay, so, so that new t- relationship new- didn't last much longer. But <laughs> I was going to say, new TV show idea. That's like an underlying thread, and and the and the resolution to like a Law and Order. Like, there's a tech company person who's killed, and the only reason you know who did is because there's the a secret, the, yeah. the secret <laughs> image that the that the Apple or the tech company employee finds for testing the new thing, and they had to come forward at the very end and like, no, it was so and so. Yeah, God, we're we're creating so much great media here. This is I'm this is it. You, I'm in the wrong industry. Like, I should be in the idea. Um, so. <laughs> So I would say the hardest thing that my team works on right now is colors. So um, it's really interesting. A, a gentleman on my team, when we do the big announcements, you know, people text, oh, yeah. congratulations. Are you so proud? I was like, yeah. I haven't worked on that thing in months. Like I'm working on right. two, three you're generations the, out, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, by yeah. the time it's announced, I was like, oh, that's kind of, oh, how cute. You know? Oh, yeah, yay. Yeah. yeah. So um, when we did the new IMAX, the candy yeah. colored IMAX They're this beautiful. year. Yeah. Yeah. That, that like color is so much harder than anybody understands to get it the exact shade. And then when to mass produce that Mm -hmm, across mm -hmm. all of the entire supply chain so that every single one matches uh, or is within some plus or minus tolerance, but like the supply chains are so long um, and getting that color exactly right. uh, I I don't think I could, I, I lack the vocabulary to explain explain it in a way where anybody could sufficiently appreciate how yeah. challenging it is. And um, we have people who work on like, that's all they do is color match every single plot, like the connector housing for the wow. plastic to the wow. paint, to like the offset of the, you know, right. and it, they're different materials made in different places that go through different chemical processes. Right. So at the end of the, right. at the end of all of that process, they have to look right. Um, so you have to like, you know, reverse calculate what the raw material should look like going into the process. And right. Not to mention all the environmental impact to layer on top of that, because you could do totally. it probably even easier without that. Texturing is something that, um, you know, I, I'm really proud of like all the environmental work we've done around texturing because back in the day, like even when I started, like we were using HF acid to etch and like, that's an industry standard thing. Like, well, we're not going to do that. That's nasty and gross. Right. So mm-hmm. what I'm really proud of is we do things that are really hard and are really expensive, <laughs> because they're the right thing to do. And we do it without compromising on the design. And to me, that's where like the secret sauce is. And like, if you ask what is so cool about Apple, like it's that grind for things like people would never see. There's, there's a lot of stories I could tell you where our, our cosmetics, like you wouldn't notice Mm -hmm. as a consumer, you would not notice some of the defects that we throw away stuff for all the time. Like, this is not good enough. This is not good. enough. Like our cosmetic requirements are such that um, it better be flawless because you yeah. probably paid a good chunk for it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, you're, you're the the reputation and and the never accepting quote unquote good enough is is, yeah. is where Apple stands. It's where honestly it's where Disney stands apart. It's where Apple stands apart. It's and it all comes down to industrial systems engineering. Right? There you go. The, There's the a problems. tagline. See, you you should you should be the marketer for. I, yeah. Well, it's technically what I do. Yeah, there you go. 
sell people because I need them. I need to hire them. I need a pipeline of people. <laughs> we've, we've got a we got a strong little pipeline. You have you have one of our or you did this summer one of our uh, current current Mark. kids. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. Mark parent there. He gave his final his presentation uh, yesterday. Hopefully, it was good. <laughs> yeah, you know uh, he's a doll. He he is so honest and transparent. Uh, we're like, so what was challenging about this? You, and, you know, it was a whole list of like, here's all the ways communicating with the supplier in China, with the language barrier, a time difference. Yeah. Like he's yeah. with COVID now, we've, we've not been able to travel. I think, yeah. you know, I don't know how many times we've been to China uh, but, and now for like a year and a half to be grounded, like that is literally crippling to our, the way we work. Right. Um, right. So especially on QA, that, as, like that whole process oh, yeah. of just understanding how to maintain quality is going to be. Yeah. remotely yeah uh even having design reviews so like you can't do a color review over webex mm. or zoom right that's just not it's, mm -mm. it's not a thing so um there are certain parts of our job that like you have to touch the parts um so anyway so for him to try and re remote manage a factory of people he's never met uh he, he had some real candid feedback about how challenging that was mm -hmm. so uh, i admire his resilience it is it's definitely been a test of our of our resilience over the last year and a half well, good. Well, he had, uh, he was very excited the other day, uh, the other day, it's probably a couple of weeks ago now where he's like, Hey, well, cause I was, he was in, we we're in a zoom meeting, seeing them all for the first time in a long time in the middle of the summer. And he's like, Oh, Paul, I want to let you know. I just met my, my boss's boss, like, <laughs> get, like shouted out and it was like, knows you or something. And I'm like, like, yeah, no, like she was one of the first ambassadors. Like it's a big deal. And like, honestly, it's why you're like the first person, one of the first people that we reached out to for the podcast was like, yeah, that's right. I need to talk to Kristen. Let's get yeah. her going on the, on the podcast. So that it all is, it all is coming full circle to, to this these conversations. Awesome. Like Mark working yeah. in your, in your arena. So that's nice. Yeah. Well, I love to be connected. I talked to professor Dasuki a couple of weeks ago because I'm hiring, right? Like I, I had yeah. six openings and I was like, I know where I can get some good people. So I started yeah. tapping, you know, our network outside of the normal channels. And he's like, why aren't you more connected to the, like, can you, so anyway, uh, well, hopefully there'll be more opportunities to connect in the future. Yeah. And then, you know, if you ever want more official things, let me know. Cause we'll get you, there's, there's more masses if, depending on which vein you want to tap into at USC. Right. So if you want to, yeah. you want to be the, the minimal vein through the Suki and like his little mentorship roles, you want to go broader to the department, you go broader to the school, you want to stay yeah. inside of the student ambassadors. Of course we, we have so many, we have so many student ambassador alums that work at Apple. It's nuts. Is that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, when, whenever it makes sense, like, let me know, I'd be delighted to a few years ago, um, a friend of mine and I reached out to Dean Yates and we said, Hey, we want to talk to the women yeah. undergrads yeah. because it was at the time, like Sheryl Sandberg had written her book around lean in. And there was a mm -hmm. whole lot of conversation in the media around it. Um, and it was like, I, the, all the things I know now that I didn't know then that if only I had known, I would approach right. things differently, or I, I would have, um, you know, it takes, I think a whole lot of career experience to grow, um, that confidence and that grace and that resilience, um, and just really get to like who you are and what kind of leader you want to be and, and what you want your contribution and your mark to be. Um, that I think can be so overwhelming when you're 22, 23 uh, uh, and, and for a long time after. Right. Um, What's funny so is like, anyway. it's like, it's like you're reading my questions that I wrote for you in this <laughs> interview. And my, the thing I was going to hop on at the end of this was that we have so many young women, young girls who are in high school that are going through this application process. And, and hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll stumble across this episode and knowing where you are with the long view retrospectively, Looking yeah. back to yourself in high school, I mean, it's kind of the journey we just took over this conversation. What would you tell that 17 year old, you know, who uh, I can do math. Like that's, yeah. that's, that's the end of the sentence. Uh, looking at engineering <laughs> in the future. What, what do you, what do you want to tell them looking into that? I would say like the world is your oyster. There is so much opportunity and, and we need that diverse perspective. Like there, there are things I can't tell you at Apple, about uh, like I can't give you yeah. specifics but like you need a diverse population to get it right like yeah. face ID we need faces that look really different um yeah. Siri we want her to understand accents and and all kinds of dialects right like mm -hmm. and there are times when like we'll pick up something and, and we're working on this device and it's like yeah but for what about for a left-handed person it's like oh shit we don't have yeah. any left-handed people right um and so women represent this voice that um that 
it's I, I'm not thinking of statistics, right? But yeah, yeah like, it, gee, it would just be great to have more chicks in the room. Um, right. You know, I, I have never been the person who thought like, oh, poor me, I'm just a girl engineer, right? But like, I can't tell you how many conversations I'm in where I'm the only one. And I never paid attention to it until maybe, you know, mm, I won't say I never, it never bothered me but it is something I notice, And, and for every yeah. step of my career, there have been conversations where I was the only one. Um, what I won't lie to you about is like, there are a lot of challenges we need to go solve. Yeah. Um, there is still rampant <laughs> discrimination and things that yeah. like, Oh my God, it's 2019. Did that really just come out of your mouth? Like, right. or like you are a walking HR lawsuit, right? Like, would you right. please kindly watch yourself? Um, so I think what I would say is, there is so much opportunity. You absolutely 100% can do it. If, if mm-hmm. there's a confidence gap, right? Know that it's going to be really challenging mm-hmm. and know that it's, and, and see all of those challenges as opportunities to learn and a test of, of your resilience. Um, you know, there was, uh, can I, can I go a little woo woo on you? So, mm-hmm. um, so I left Apple for a year in 2018, um, to do a med device startup. And I thought, this is what all that training was for. It's like a really incredible device. I, 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 like the world needs it. The world needs this company to be successful. Um, and they were on the East Coast. And I thought, well, this is what I learned manufacturing and engineering for, is to go help and right. make this super compelling product that's going to save lives. Um, this is the Butterfly was, Network. Butterfly, yeah. It, it, it was just when I, I wasn't looking for a job when I interviewed with them, like they were just great people. And when I saw the demo, like literally I started tearing up. I was like, I have to do this. Um, so I upended my whole life, but you know, it, it wasn't the right fit ultimately day. Right. And I tried to brute mm-hmm. force it. I was flying coast to coast every week. I was grinding. Yeah. I was, I would get so frustrated that they didn't know the things that I knew. Right. I was like, <laughs> trust me, this is how we're going to make a million of these. Right. And, yeah. and it just wasn't the right time, right place, right fit for, for ultimately what I wanted and, and what they needed at that time in, in the company to be successful. Um, mm-hmm. And it was at that time, I think I, I took a moment and I stepped back and I, I didn't work for like three months for the first time ever in my life. I took this time off. Um, and I realized everywhere I had gotten, I just grinded through it. And I, I just worked really hard. And if I was just smarter, if I worked harder, like I could make it happen. And I sat back and I thought like, well, what's the point of all this, right? Like I got, I've made my millions at Apple. Like I've proven to myself. I have like, I, I have all these things. Um, and so I, I went inward and I really spent a lot of time. Um, I found, I call her my Zen, my Zen lady, uh, you know, meditated, you know, went to the Buddhist temple, like really reflect on all these things and mm-hmm. like realize like, at the end of the day, you have to take care of your spirit as well. Right. Yeah. So I wouldn't, I'm not the type to say we need more women come hell or high water. Like we got to do this. It's got to be the right thing for you. And, and mm-hmm. you have to go find the meaning in your life. And like, you can go negotiate all the boundaries that you want to create the life and the career that you want to do. There's plenty of opportunity. It's just about defining the right, uh, what you want. Right. It sort of goes back to the whole, like both, both sides swipe right on each other. And so if you just take that yeah. mindset of like, I'm just trying to find the right thing for right now that um, feeds my curiosity. It feeds my soul. It makes my heart feel good. I'm going to work with people who I, who I admire and I want to work with. Like there's nothing sadder to me than people who are unhappy in what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I didn't mean to go all, uh, all woo woo on you, but I think I would, I would say to those ladies, like, yeah, sure. Try it. If it doesn't work out, like, will you learn something? Right. Right. <laughs> if it does work out, you're really good at it, but you don't like it. Like, okay, well, can we make a slight pivot on that? Like, I right. remember your comment about the compass, right? Like uh, three degrees less, like a couple of degrees, right. Right. Like just, like, just, just, let's just make some adjustments. Sometimes you need a big adjustment. Sometimes it's fine tuning. Sometimes it's just finding the right person who will believe in you and who will encourage you and, and pick you up when you're dusty. Right. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you remember, you remember my comment on the compass? Yeah, it was in one of the podcasts. You you talked oh. about this. Oh, good. I was like, I'm like, did I tell you that 20 years no, ago? No, like, oh, I no, thought no, no. I'm like, okay, I thought that was more no, of no, a no, recent no. Uh, recent uh, epiphany of mine. I'm like, did I say that back when I was that? Wow. No, I, I, I did my homework for this. I listened to two previous podcasts. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully you got a new fan. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, it, it's don't, don't ever apologize for, for those thoughts. I, I think it's something that everybody needs to talk about. Everybody needs to be aware of because there is, 
a preconceived notion that success comes from your foot on the gas and mm. never letting up. And I, and I'm to, to, to kind of bluntly summarize what you got at is that like, you finally took your foot off the gas for a second and looked around and saw what was going on. Um, and part of that is to, to borrow your other phrases from earlier, that, that immigrant drive, right. That idea yeah. of like, I got to go. And that's in, in, in kind of embedded into me. Uh, and I don't know any different. I'm hardwired this way. Um, but also at what expense, and I haven't kept track of that expense, let alone the opportunity cost of what could have happened as a result of not doing those things. Yeah. And I had, a, I had a very similar experience, um, just this past year. I mean, I think there's a lot of people that have taken the pandemic as a, a, a grand reawakening. Um, you know, at first I was like, awesome. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm in my underwear all day, you know, like, this is like, <laughs> Right. And, and, I, and right. I've been through, I've been through every phase of that in the last 18 months. And, and I've enjoyed every one of those phases. Um, and I've also recognized in myself, uh, of course, my wife would say, no kidding. Uh, like I'm a grumpy dude. Like, and I, and I, <laughs> and I, I found that I needed to not be in this constant kind of repeating cycle. So the idea that like, I didn't have to be in this commute to go sit in this office space to then go back in the commute to then come home to like squeeze in an hour with my family to then like decompress on TV and then start over and do the whole day again. Like my days look nothing like that now. Yeah. And the ability to just kind of shift. And if I, if it, what I would call the, the first nine months of the pandemic was pure gluttony on my behalf. Like I was literally sure. eating and drinking everything all the time. Sure. Yeah. And then the last nine months has been a complete reverse of that. And I've never felt better. I mean, like there's, there's hard days, but like, it's this idea of like, Hey, you know what this day, I, I really feel it when I know I have meetings like all, all day. And I'm like, wow, I used to do this all the time. This is nuts. And, and it's draining and it's so, yeah. uh, soul squeezing, if that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah. And, and, and where do you find the soul fulfillment and do people get different ways out of that? Like they talk about different forms of meditation, like not, not like, do you need to meditate, but what is a meditative practice? What is something that you can do to just refulfill and find it's that you mentioned as the Zen lady, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all a practice. And, and, um, no, okay. Now I know the words, like the advice I would give, which is like, ask for what you need like push mm. the boundaries. So I, um, yeah, like I found my Zen lady, she was awesome. And um, I, it has shifted my perspective and uh, you know, I don't go sit in an ashram for like three months out of the year in India, the way she does. Right. But like, I, I take a little piece of her with me and it has changed yeah. how I connect with my team It's changed how I connect with my yeah. friends, my family, um, just to be more mindful, but you have to find your practice. Right. So for me, like there's some meditation there's, there's, I go outside and I walk every day on my lunch hour and sometimes I take calls. Right. But one of the things I learned early on is especially working on a place like Apple or, or McKinsey, like, like similar to you, like I gave my life to that place. Right. Like Apple is the place that will take everything you're willing to give and then ask for more. My first year, I worked every day except Christmas day. And I felt like I had to, and I felt like the business required it. There are still some days that feel like that, but I started asking for what I want. And so now um, you're going to laugh at me. I haven't done this since, since we went into lockdown, but handful of years ago. So I, I would go to the gym to work out my physical energy. Right. And I started right. taking these spin classes and such. And one of the ladies was like, you should teach this. Like, you're really good at it. And I was like, Oh, oh, bless your heart. Right. To borrow from my Texas days, like you bless your mind. Well, you know what? Fast forward. I got a side hustle. Like I teach spin. Uh, at, at, yeah. Yeah. I'm one of those annoyingly perky 6am. Like we can do it. Team, right. And like the connections you make, like from, from my classes, like I have groupies, right. And, and, and they're still reaching out. Like, when are you coming back to the gym? Right. But it's like, I found like that little community that was totally separate from what I did that allowed me to work out whatever stress I had, feel really yeah, good. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Endor you know, remember legally blonde, like endorphins yeah. give you energy, like happy yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Do, right. Yeah. So like, but like it, it, I never thought eight years ago I could ask for that. Now, like my boss knows, right? Well, she's, yeah. she's got, I, I have to leave early on Tuesday because I have a six o'clock class at night, right? So I, yeah. I do that. I now, now I balance that with my work requirements, which is like sure. I teach 6 a.m. classes, but I got an opportunity to teach the night classes and, you know, we can make that work. And um, you don't have to, you got to figure out like 
you have to put together the puzzle pieces. Um, can I tell you one other story about Please. this woman I met um, at Disney? She's now like VP at Epcot or something. Her name's Kartika. Um, okay. And I haven't talked to Kartika since you know 2008, right? So yeah, yeah. I, I don't think she's going to listen to this, but if she does, hey girl, I remember you and the words you left Send on me. Send it to her. Send it to her. Yeah. Uh, and she, um, I remember her telling me, we're talking about mentoring, right? Because of course, yeah. like first real job, like how do you find a mentor, right? And she's like, oh, I don't just have one. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, I've got like 10. And I was like, I don't think you understand what a mentor is, right? Like I was very much like, no, no this no, is I have, like, I have a mentor slot in my life. I'm looking to fill it. Yeah. And it's like, no, you 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 typically have one or two mentor mentors. And like, you don't have yeah. 10, right? Yeah. She was onto this idea of like a personal board of directors. Like she predates everybody. She was onto it. But that's the current term, the personal board of directors. Yeah. Thing. Like, it's and, come up more times lately than I've ever heard. Yeah. But she, the way she explained it to me is like, Kristen, there's no such perfect person that I want to be no. like. So what I've done is I've drawn this composite of yeah. like, this person is really good at executive presence. Yeah. This person yeah. is really good at mentoring and developing their team. This person's excellent communication skill. And she's like, so I just, you know, she gets like the, the yeah. little, the sampler, right? Yeah. And she created her composite person. And so when I think about that sort of stuff of like, that's how you pick for my, or that's what I do for my life as well. So I have my board of directors, right? But for my life, like, I know I need this amount of physical activity. I need this amount of whatever. Right, right. Every three to six months, I check in with myself. I have a note on my phone. These are the eight things that matter to me in my life. And yeah. every every handful of months, on a scale of one to 10, how am I doing on those? And and I have you know the same list for my job. And I, I go into my boss's office. I write on the whiteboard, like, here are the five things. Right now, I'm a four on this. So we got to do something about it, right? But right. a very candid, transparent conversation, like, this is me to be happy and fulfilled and to do my best work. Do you have a match? Cool. Let's keep doing this. If not, yeah. let's talk about what flexibility we need. So I would say, don't be afraid to ask. Anyway, tying this back to your question a really long time ago no, uh, to these young ladies of like, figure out what you want and then go ask for it. Because the worst can happen if somebody says no. And then, and then now, you know, that's not the place you need to be. Right. Yeah. It, it and if you don't to... know what you need, you'll figure it out. There's no pressure. <laughs> you got time. <laughs> That, that, I think that's an underlying a thing that I have to say all the time. And I've said it on this a lot of times. And I say it when I talk to students is like, no one has this figured out ahead of time. Mm -hmm. This whole thing is experiential and you're supposed to fall flat on your face. The goal yeah. of this advice is not to say, Hey, look, I tripped. So you don't have to, it's like, no, no, no. You have to go through these trips. You have to kind of like hit yourself a few times. You got to bang yourself up a little bit. But the point is that you shouldn't, because I think this is the issue with the current generation is that it's, you know, whether they call it the information generation or whatever you want to get into is that they have so much information available to them that they feel like they can do all of their advanced research mm. to never make a mistake. Mm. And I, and I commonly refer back to Yelp, like you can't Yelp your life. You can't like That's so much pressure. Yeah. Right. Like you can't see like, okay, here are all the Thai restaurants in my neighborhood. Here's, here's the average rating. Here's the best items there. And like predict your future meal perfectly. You can't do that for your job. You can't do it for your life. And I would yeah. argue you can't do that for food either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like that, that's where they're growing up with. And they, they choose college or they think they're going to choose colleges that way. They choose their majors yeah. that way. They, they choose what they think their career path is that way. And you know, yeah. as well as everyone else that their career path ain't going to be like that. Mm -mm. Um, you know what's interesting what you say, like to avoid the mistakes. So um, I'm not trying to proselytize my meditation practice, but if you've never no, listened do. to Dan Harris, like listen to Dan, Dan Harris. Harris, Dan okay. Harris, he's an anchor at ABC news. He started this app called 10% happier. He wrote a bunch of books. Um, cool. It's got a podcast. Like it, I, I could text you recommendations, but yeah, yeah. he, his whole thing is like, he wants to make the concept of it accessible to people. Now in that time, calm has come out, has faces come out. Like there's a whole bunch of, right. of opportunities, but he said, people don't meditate because they have this idea of somebody sitting. Um, um, yeah. Like very peaceful. Like, uh, I don't think we can say in, what, in I, sense, I, like crisscross applesauce, yeah, right? Like, like yes, crisscross like applesauce. And, and they're just very right. Calm and peaceful on this mountaintop and nothing bothers them in their mind. Like nothing's happening. And he, yeah, he's yeah. like, and so people sit down to meditate and they get distracted and they're like, see shit. I'm not a good meditator. He's like, right. no, that's the practice. Like the practice is recognizing when the thought comes into your brain, yeah. you observe the thought without judgment. And then you say, now I'm going to come back and focus on my breath. And I'm going to let that thought just be there. I'm not going to judge myself for having the thought. I'm not going to say that I failed. It's a practice. You're strengthening this muscle. And over time, right? Just like if you're working out at the gym, like oh, you're strengthening this, this mindfulness yeah. muscle that then gives you the space 
to just be aware of like, you know, when I'm so pissed off, it's like, no, no, no. I am reacting. Like, why am I reacting to that? How does that feel right. in my body? And like, you just get curious about it. All of a sudden you stop being pissed off. at the guy who cuts you off in line at Starbucks. Right. And like, that will change your life, like over time compounding. Right. But it's like you, everything is a practice. And so the, like this avoiding failure is like, that's silly. Like that, that, like, that's how you learn. Like that's the good yeah. shit right there. So yeah. yeah. I just realized I said shit probably like 20 times on this podcast. Oh, Hopefully, can you believe it? Okay. Or it's okay. I didn't, I didn't want to stop you. I didn't want you to become self-aware. We're grown we'll up. figure it out. We'll figure yeah. it out. Uh, I think I'll leave it in. Um, yeah. So here, okay. So I have a personal question and then I have actually have an important question uh, about identity. And I'm going to pl- I'm going to tag that yeah. now so I don't forget about it. Um, but I've now it's, I've lost track of my personal question. Oh, meditation. Yeah. I fall victim to that preconceived notion of what meditating is mm. whenever the word pops in my head, which is why I always try to self-correct it to myself as like a meditative practice or a meditative process. Yeah. And that could be drawing, that could be practice. whatever yeah. occupational therapy you might find helpful. Because that, that makes sense to me. But um, the feeling of being in a state of meditation where like you get distracted and you come back in is, is the, the quote unquote Zen point or the, the meditative point, is that when like just everything is, is kind of gone? Like, or what, what are you seeking to achieve? And, and the reason I ask mm. really long form personal question is this last nine months, uh, I've been like really focused on like health and fitness and, yeah. and, on, and no, no, no side <laughs> it's a lot of it has to do with Apple products, right? So my Apple watch and the Apple fitness and closing. Oh, yeah, and, that's, and, so, it's annoying. and so, so I've got, no, but it, it works for me. And I, and, and I, and I'm all in on fitness plus, and I've done, oh, I've now, cool. do, I, I, and, and I'm in starting in December, I started it. And now I work out on fitness plus every single day. And yeah. I'm doing um, a mix of hit and yoga has been my thing. And so I oh, kind of okay. do, I do hit and then yoga. So yoga is a really like day. And I've too. never done yoga in my life. And yeah. I felt like a fool for most of the time, but now I'm like really into it. And like, I just That's did awesome. yoga this morning. Like I did 45 minute yoga session, yoga with Jessica. Just a heads up on the Jessica. On the okay. Plus. I haven't tried her, but I, yeah. Okay. Good. I've done right, every yeah. 45 minute session that exists in fitness plus. And so um, anyways, <laughs> I was doing that and I, there's always this, you know, meditative practice at the end, right. Mm-hmm. Where you go to Shavasana and you try oh, to like sure. find, and you try to like find that moment. And there's moments where I'm like, completely in my breath there's moments where all the stuff comes in about like what might like this podcast interview came into my head this morning and i know they're like they talk you through it like okay just recognize it and then let it go go. and then there's moments where like i completely zone out and i'm like completely gone i think i might be asleep i don't know (laughs) is that what you're shooting for like and that's an honest question and i'm not i'm not passing judgment i'm like is is that it uh so as, if there's an easy answer to this, if not, we can yeah, talk about so, it later. <laughs> so I am super, super novice, right? Like I've only been doing this for a short number okay. of years. Uh, so I will defer to what some of my teachers say, but like meditation isn't about achieving anything specific. It's about feeling how you feel. And Got it's, it. um, I have had those, those, we call it like a sit, right? A sit where like, I got to that state of like, Ooh, wow, this is trippy, but being the type a overachiever that I am, like if, if I sit yeah. down with this intention of like, I, I need to get there. And then therefore I have not accomplished what I want to accomplish. Yes. Like that's like antithetical to the, to the concept uh-huh. of the practice, which is to just be there and let it be. Um, and so I think there's this really beautiful phrase, which, um, which I have written like little notes and stuff, but yeah. it's like, it's loving what is, um, mm. And so can you um, accept what it is and just be at peace with it? So I would say like, yes, I would love to be in a blissful state of bliss all the time. But like I went to um, to retreat up at Spirit Rock, which is just up the road in Marin. Mm-hmm. Um, and the teacher came in and he sat down and he's like, so here I am, a teacher at Spirit Rock Meditation Center. It's one of the top meditation centers in the country about to teach you all about all this stuff. And he's like, and I am losing my mind on the drive down here because I'm seven minutes late and there was a traffic and he's like, and I'm just getting all worked up. And he's just like, yeah, life happens. <laughs> like, <that's, laughs> right? like, so I think it's less about like preventing that and more about recognizing when, and when it's happening it. and then recognizing that thoughts are just thoughts, feelings are just feelings yeah. and they come and go like waves of the ocean. And so can we just, 
can we just be okay for one more breath? Can you sit through it? Can you, can you get curious about why you feel that way? It's mm. okay to feel however you feel, right? Nobody's yeah. without rage or um, yeah. there's another really cool podcast called The One You Feed, which is based okay. on the story of the two wolves inside of us. Um, and it's like, no, uh, one is a good wolf is kind and loving. And the other is like this angry wolf. And, um, have you not heard this? Uh, anyway. no. Oh, sure. I, I, I totally sure. get it. I, I, so, I totally, yeah, but, I see where it's going. I get like it. I understand the parable. Two wolves that are yeah. constantly at battle. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and a grandfather is telling the grandchild the story and the, and the child says, well, which one wins? And, and, and the grandparent says the one you feed. Right. So yeah. It's the one you indulge, but like, you can't not have the bad wolf. The bad wolf is always going to be there. That's human nature. Um, so it's, it's recognizing when it happens and, and being okay with that without being owned by these thoughts and feelings that are just transient. Yeah. Uh, frustration is going to happen. It, yeah. If you can't let yeah. it go, just let it be. Yeah. Um, yeah. That I, I could talk about this for days because it's been a recent like new thing for me. Uh, and I am learning and going. And I think the thing that I'm learning the most is I can't approach this stuff the way that I approach everything else, which is I'm a super competitive person. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned, I mentioned <laughs> I get real, it. <laughs> real briefly. Yeah. You and I are very similar. I'm, I'm going to win at meditation. It's like, Oh, well, like yeah, I well, have like, a friend who's like that. And it's like, Oh, but you can't like, that's right. Kind of thing. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and I, I really treat that like a lot to, towards the yoga practice and even just calling it the practice. The point is like, you're not yeah. supposed to do it. You never accomplish practice. it. No, it's you never accomplish it. But I get like super, as mentioned this to Emily, our, our the co-host, where I, I feel really upset that she's not here because she would love this conversation. Um, but I was talking to her the other day about this, where I was like, you know, I get super competitive in yoga. And um, my wife comes and tells me oftentimes afterwards, like I'll, I'll do it outside or I'll do it in the bedroom or something. Like and she'll show me, she's like, I don't think you're supposed to yell and get angry in the middle of yoga because <laughs> I get like really pissed off that I didn't accomplish this one thing because yeah. I shouldn't be able to, but I really want to like, for, want like to. yeah, like crow is a thing for me. Like I, yeah. I gotta get, I want to get that down. And today I got a good part of it. Like not there yet. I can't hold that's it. Awesome. I, I held yeah. hand today. I held hand, if you're familiar with hand or if that's what it's called, but it's like kind of like a crow and I did baby crow today. And I was like, I'm in, I'm doing some cool stuff. Like I feel really good about it. But then like, I know that today, a good day, next time I do it, I'm going to fall over doing something and I'm going to be super pissed off at myself. And that's where I have to realize that's the point of it is like this ongoing practice and you breathe through it and you let it go, you let it be. And that ends up being your day afterwards. And it's, it's a nice setup to that. And I'm just, so I'm, I'm thankful for these comments and, and I'm really appreciative of yeah. you just sharing your soul so, a little bit here. Yeah. Click into Dan here. Uh, his book is, is, great. And he, he's just very charming, but, um, he, he called his business 10% happier. Cause he's like, there's hmm. no panacea. Like there's no magic. Like, Oh, no. if, if you sit for 20 minutes every day, like all of a sudden you won't have problems. He's like, but it might make you 10% happier. Huh. Yeah, and there's, then, not, there's not a level up on happy. Like I've, yeah. I've accomplished it now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but then it pays dividends and that's his point is like, well, next year you're 11% happier. And then you're like, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> 1.2 right. whatever right? Right, uh, right I can't do that kind of math anymore but um but like that's his whole point and like over the long time like there's ups and downs every day but over the long time sort of like the stock market right like over the long term the trend is upward but right. day by day if you watch that stock ticker you're going to drive yourself nuts I'm like yeah <laughs> don't check totally. your e-trade account every day totally <laughs> once a month I want to be mindful of time because I know that we've gone yeah I feel bad projected time. I'm <laughs> fine I want to make sure you're okay I'm good. Um, Cause I have, is, I have one, I have one last question for you. And, and, and this is, yeah. it's important to what we were talking about before, which is that it, it occurs to me that a lot, there's a thread in this entire conversation that I hope people have listened to this whole thing. I might have to break this up into two episodes because I want people to actually I was going to say, thing. you're going to have to edit a whole lot out of this. <laughs> no, I'm not taking, I'm not taking a thing out. I'm not taking a thing out, but I think I'm going to make it two episodes. Um, okay. The, there's a thread in this entire conversation that I hope people are getting to at this point. I'm going to jumble my words here because I don't have a real clear thought on it, but it has to do with identity and it has to do with how you viewed your identity coming into engineering, how you viewed or you self-identified going into different jobs. And there's a lot of things about like, I'm not a nerd, you know, like I'm not <laughs> X, I'm, I'm not that. And then advice to women, like, you know, like maybe it's because you don't see yourself identified or representation in different areas. 
I guess I don't really have a question here, but like, am, are you seeing the same thread that I am in kind of that, your life? Yeah. How do you think yeah. about identity and how you think about like how identity um, is important in, in kind of the future of building of, of, of a more diverse and equitable workforce uh, and, and solving problems? Um, again, like, so, such a jumbled mess of a question, but there's, there's a topic there that I can't get, off I get my head it. out of. Yeah. And it has a lot to do with, it has a lot to do, I guess, my point of like so many people coming out of high school look at engineering and say, that's not me. I'm not like when those it, people. Yeah. When it is. And and so much of your life, you went into almost everything you did saying, that's not me, but I'll <laughs> right. try it. Yeah. So how do we address that? Million dollar that's question, a great right? Great question. <laughs> yeah. Can I give you another label that I fully rejected and now have totally owned and I put on other people? Um, sure. When I was at McKinsey, they talked about... Uh, yeah, that's, we profile to hire insecure overachievers. And I was like, shut your filthy mouth. Like insecure, <laughs> not this girl overachiever. Like I'll take, right. But there's like a two by two of like insecure, uh, not secure enough or, or over secure, overly confident. And then underachiever, overachiever. <laughs> that's the exact uh, description of who you said you were. Well, that was the point, right? Like I was so offended because I was like, you always oh, had to keep your foot on the gas because you're insecure about where you're going. Yes, because I'm not. Under- but that was their point. It's like it. You never like you in the two by two. You have overachievers, underachievers. Nobody wants an underachiever, right? I, oh, I shouldn't say nobody. Like not a company like that, right? And then insecure or overly confident because I don't think over secure is the word. And um, the overly confident person isn't going to work that hard. The insecure no. person is going to want to prove themselves over and over. Yeah. And then, and so it was like, I totally rejected. And then I was like, oh no, that's actually, that's actually grossly appropriate. Like that is yeah. like, oh, and then I felt some shame about that. Right. Um, but it's true. And I think that that, that's what, that's a personality type that is attracted to these types of roles. Like, like that's a personality type. Almost like Steve Jobs, like here's to the crazy ones, right? The people who are crazy yep. and think they're going to change the world are the ones who do. So it's, it's what drives that motivation. So um, the people who are here really want to do that stuff. And what I would say to them is let go of the insecure piece. Like you are, here's another woo woo person for you, Brene Brown. Like yeah. you are worthy who you are, exactly who you are right now in this moment. There's no, mm-hmm. if only I had this, if only I was. Mm-hmm. thinner, younger, more beautiful, uh, smarter, more accomplished. If only I had X in my bank account, like, no, you are worthy of exactly who yeah. you are. Um, and so um, is there like an identity I find? Um, I might throw back to my old friend and say, like, it's a composite of people right there. Yeah. There are, I have fallen into this trap of feeling alone at work, right? Like, I'm not like these people are like, I'm not like that. And, you know, like, at the end of the day, you you come into life all alone and you go out of life all alone, not to be morbid about it. Right. But it's like finding that community of like, if you're looking for perfection, you you might, you run the risk of always being disappointed. Right. So it's like, um, can I just find the people who like, I really like this about that person. Right. I really like this about that person. Right. One of the things I've realized over time and my frustration, um, a lot of frustration that I've had in my career is um, you know, when you're a little kid, like you grew up thinking, uh, oh, the teacher knows everything because the teacher's the authority or like the doctor sure. knows everything. Sure. Like, we always trust sure. the doctor. Now I'm old enough to be friends with teachers and doctors who I went to school with. And I was like, oh boy, right? Like, no, like, yeah, that's, no, that's no. not actually true. Like yeah, yeah, party, yeah. party with that person, right? And, um, <laughs> but like, uh, I know what kind of bad decisions they make in their real life, right? So everybody is human. And so as long as I had this expectation that like the person above me, um, like on the org chart, like my, my manager, my leader, whoever they're just in that role on the org chart. It doesn't mean that they are a superset of me and that I'm mm-hmm. aspiring to be that. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like I have people at work call me boss and I was like, what's wrong with you? Like we are coworkers. Like we are here to do our best work together. It's my job to enable you to do all those things. So I would say like, I don't, I feel like just as, as uh, not well-defined as the question is, my answer is super rambling, but I, um, I think from an identity, <laughs> I think from an identity perspective, just um, manage your expectations and know that everybody is a work in progress. Everyone's on their own journey, um, and can we just find the good and appreciate the unique gifts every person brings to the table? Sure. Because 
you will look at people and say like, I'm not like them. I don't do, but there's something that they, there's, they have a gift to bring. You, you may not know what it is. Yeah. And the people who are unkind to you, who are um, unjust, who stand in the way are offering you something. We just don't know what the lesson is yet. Right. Right. And so can we reframe that and, and like, yes, recognize that that's unsatisfying or, or it's, or it's, all kinds of beep up, right? Like yeah, it's, it's yeah. bad. What, what they did was bad, but they're offering us an opportunity to learn something. Right. I don't know. I, it's really so, hard to forgive unforgivable things, but. Sure. So I, you know, what's, what's interesting is that first of all, that incredibly insightful. And I think it, and, and very much oh, helpful. Thank you. <laughs> and and I, I think that, that students going through this process need to hear that because there's this idea of, I just don't know it yet, but I'm seeking to know the answer. And the whole point is that like, it's a journey, like it's experiential yeah. process. You'll get through it. Yeah. Um, and you have the worth, you have the value and you, you got this, you got this, you could do it. It, it, it. This is all about growth and you're at this stage in growth and you'll get there and we'll help you get to it. Um, I used to give a kind of this interactive lecture to, to incoming first year students, not incoming, well, mm-hmm. they're in their first semester. And you made me think of it that there was a little part of this uh, action because the whole point was like uh, short short version is like onboarding into college, like mm-hmm. how how to, how to be successful in college. It was like the lecture was, and it was and it dealt a lot with identity and it dealt a lot with um, preconceived notions of what you think college is because all you know yeah. is what you've read about, all you know is what you've seen or in movies. movies, yeah, right. And and also you know we we, we it actually it tinged on like it was called getting involved and rising to leadership. That's what I called the lecture. Cause I also need to incentivize people thinking they're going to get something out of it. And really it's about, yeah. here's, here's how you're going to struggle, but I'm going to call it getting involved and rising to leadership. I and a lot of, a lot of our, um, a lot of our conversation was about these preconceived notions of you just got here. And uh, also your engineering brains are focused on efficiency. You're focused on like finding yeah. the quickest answer to something. And this is where your brains are going to start to fail you here because, and then I was able to pull on this one class that I did not do very well in, in animal psychology and that there's this, these small bird brains, uh, you know, they don't have the higher level functioning, but what they do in order to make things more efficient is they have templates and so that they can identify threats based on templates. And so mm-hmm. they can see shapes and figures. And if they recognize this shape, then that's dangerous. So they're this shape, that's mom. And they, so they don't see, they don't know in this way as much, but they can recognize templates and then do various things as a result of that. And what I, what I proposed to them was that as an engineer, you've created templates before you got here and you yeah. pre-identify people in your dorm. Like that's the, and I narrowed it down to be kind of like social identity issues. Like, oh, that's the jock. That's yeah. the, that's the sorority girl. That's the nerd. That's the breakfast the club. <laughs> yeah. The breakfast club. Thank you. Yeah. You, you break it down to the breakfast club and, and all of a sudden you're like, okay, cool. So that's how I'm going to navigate my social situation without ever taking the time to just kind of absorb. And it's going to go for a long period. And you don't know how many people you've completely shut out of your life because of your templates and how many people you welcomed in and they weren't actually there to begin with, you just thought they were when they're on their own growth trajectory and you're on your own growth trajectory and you might be going in different directions. You just happen to be passing at that one moment. I mean, everybody goes to college has these horror stories of like people they met their freshman year that they thought thought was going to be the best friend for the rest of their life. And all of a sudden it's like, not at all, not for me. And whether that's anger or whether that's just, we kind of like went in these different directions, it all happens. And so it's like, Hey, open yourself up to relationships, open yourself up to experiences. And that's where that, then uh, there's a further thing that went on about getting involved and doing stuff, but it started with these templates. Like, don't do that. Find things, do things, make things happen. And I'm as, as I say this, I'm as guilty of this as possible because my wife and I are on this whole new road. Cause I, and I was, the other part of this is that I say, there's so much growth that happens in college. And the reason I want to tell you about all this growth that's going to happen in college, because you just thought you left high school where you're done growing. You just thought like, oh, I did it. Now I'm an now, adult. Here now I go. I'm a grown up. Yeah, yeah, now I'm a grown up. I can do this. And then you start realizing, oh my God, I'm at square one again. And then you get to graduate college, you're like I'm done. And then you realize, oh no, I'm at square one again. And you just realize yeah. there's actually these like five-year periods of growth you just keep going through, like first yeah. job, second job, moving in, family life, whatever. And now I'm in this whole new one that I wasn't ready for. And we're kind of discovering, which is navigating par- parent friends. Oh, whole new world, 
Yeah. Oh my God, blowing my mind where I'm having the same talk with myself as like, although I'm pretty good at it, uh, I can recognize who I want to be friends with. <laughs> You're right. I will trust my own templates because I have They're decades of experience. That, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I, I have decades of experience with judging people kind of my whole job, but yeah. I'll, I'll be like, uh, uh, that one's not going to be one we're going to be friends with. And so like, but it's hard because like your kid, you can't control who they make friends with. And yeah. we just, we've been having these talks in our household at night lately where we're like, we're so lucky that our daughter has made friends with this like tight group of, of, of her friends. And they all live within a two block radius right here. Like we're all walking oh, distance from each other. Yeah. Uh, and we're all on the same wavelength. Like everything is so far hidden and firing exactly where it needs to fire. And we're like, how lucky are we that we're like, I can hop over to that house. I can hop over to that house. You can come over to this house. We could do all this stuff. We got this really tight network. And I really hope this holds because again, the, the, the kids are on their own growth trajectories and I don't know where this is going to go, but this yeah. is just, it's just amazing. I, I think you, you really hit something, which is like, it, it is innate in us to categorize and, and, mm -hmm. and sort people and identify and label, right? That's totally natural. Like, yeah. and you can't fight it. And yeah. I think culturally too, over the last handful of years, like we've uh, in the U S at least become quite divisive. Um, and it's like, we're so much more alike than we are different. Um, and, and the one common bond, as you said about like everybody being on their own trajectory, I listened to this beautiful podcast a, a few weeks ago and somebody said, ultimately, like everybody just wants love and connection. Yep. So what would happen if we were right. to have that mindset with everybody we engage in and understand like perhaps like, like the ugly side that we see of people is that they're just processing something internal to them. Like, can we access a place of empathy or compassion? And does that change how we engage with somebody? Because mm. at the end of the day, like, you have to live with how you behave and how you engage. Like the other person's going to go on their merry way. And, and if they're not even thoughtful about it, like in yeah. all likelihood, they're not even aware of how they're behaving. I see that a lot um, in the last year and a half of COVID of like people who aren't even aware that they are processing their, their mess out on everybody else. Mm -hmm. Right. Like they're just mm -hmm. completely bliss blissfully unaware and they're angry and they're vile. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, that is really hard to maintain your grace when you're dealing with a situation like that. Yeah, but can I we mean, just look at them and be like, man, that really, life must be really hard for you right now. Well, it, it all comes <laughs> down to this level of like scarcity or, or, um, yeah. Uh, perception of scarcity. Yeah. Uh, and if I don't get X, someone else will. And, yeah. um, that's that maybe that's, you know, uh, lizard brain caveman mentality. Um, and that's at the core of all of us. And then there's divisive nature of, of, different sources online um, that feed into that and yeah. inflate it. And, and then there's, uh, I would say that divisiveness has always been there, but now we have a more, not at all where it needs to be, but a more equitable exchange of ideas where there's more voices at the table. So therefore sure. people are like that scarcity idea and that lizard brain get X because someone else is going to get it. Now there's more voices saying no, but we need it. And, and people, then there's validity on both of these sides. So where one push got, one group got pushed down. Now they're back up. And there's also just crazy people. I mean, there's just like, <laughs> sure. like sure. it's amazing to me. I'm like, what? I, I can, I can get into long stories about a conversation I just had with a yeah. parent that was had a <laughs> really long conversation with me about car seats and mm -hmm. how important they are. And, and was worried about a specific car seat and a specific trip they're going to take and yada, yada, yada. And we debated and she debated and I was like, okay, yeah. And at one point I was like, in my head, I'm like, just get a car. Like, it doesn't matter. Like they're all, they're all fine. They're all going to be good. Uh, and then tells me she, her kid shouldn't wear a mask at some sort of involvement. Oh, I don't, don't want to make, I don't want to make my kid wear a mask. I was like, wait a minute, five minutes ago, you were tripping out about a car seat for an hour long drive. And you don't want to wake your kid wear a mask at this one event indoors. Yada, yada, yada please reconcile that for me. Like, I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get it, but this is the conversation I had in my head and I just kind of walked away. And again, I was like, we are not going to be friends with this group. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a whole lot that like, you just can't make sense of. And I, I think that is so frustrating as, as engineers, right? Like you mentioned, we try to be efficient, but we try to make sense of everything. Um, yeah. And I think coming to peace with like, that that's not going to happen. You know, uh, I, at the risk of oversharing, like um, I was, 
in a relationship in the, and, and he accused me of trying to program manage our relationship. Cause like we had a disagreement oh. and I was, and I was just like, okay, what's your problem? And he said, well, you did that. I was like, okay, well, can we just blah, 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 blah. like, like I tried to problem solve it. Right. Instead yeah. of just letting him feel his feelings. And I was not used to being the one with fewer feelings. <laughs> it was like a total role reversal, but it, it was like, some things just need to be felt. Some things just take time. Some things are just not ever going to make sense. And as engineers, yeah. we're trained to get all that figured out very quickly and make sense of it. And there are facts and, and we mm-hmm. don't, I, I think if there's one people. thing, yeah, I think if there's one thing I would advocate to be added back into engineering curriculum, it, it's some, something about human interaction and emotions and, um, because that's, I think the biggest opportunity and a differentiator to be successful in a long-term engineering career is like, I, I, um, at the risk that anybody I work with will listen to this, like we have some very emotional people who are like very, very talented engineers and they don't know how to process their emotions. They don't know how to work well with others. And it's like all that stuff you were supposed to learn in kindergarten. Like maybe you missed that day in school. Um, but it, it becomes so limiting for them because at the end of the day, like if you want to if you want to advance, if you want to be yeah. successful, like for me, the job, the actual work part is not hard at all. It's the, how do I connect with the 46 people standing in front of me and get them yeah. to do their best work? Like yeah. what's getting in the way of this one? Like what's getting, and sometimes people are like, I want to be, you know, a, a manager or whatever. It's like, are you sure you want to deal with all the HR shenanigans? Right? Like, like people bring their whole selves to work. So this one had yep. a fight with her husband yep. on the way in, or this yep. one's kid is sick and hasn't slept in three days. Right. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. Like, again, it's a changing set of cards every day that we play with, but in the day, like every, if, if we just believe in pot, everybody has good intent. I don't think you can make a bad decision. And sometimes you might be wrong, but uh, you know, it's true. Uh, you know, what I, I, I think that's in, something engineers need to learn. I think everybody needs to learn. I was going to say, that's, not, that's not related to engineering. Yeah. That's just working. Uh, and that's working with people and, and yeah. like, there's no higher state of emotions than working at a university. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't imagine. We've, we've got all sorts of types. Um, and, and I'm one of those types, you know, like it, it's, it's uh, with, at the risk of oversharing on my end. Um, it is, fascinating to me how much different my daily life is because I'm in zoom meetings, not in in-person meetings. And it's really for the betterment because the amount of either stress or frustration or, 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 or just like whatever happened at that meeting, I take to the next meeting or I take home. I don't have that over zoom meetings. And I think there's a difference. I was Mm. was, again, talking to my wife the other night and I was saying, you know, what's really great is I'm in these meetings that maybe 10% of it relates to me, but I still have to sit through the rest of it. Um, in Zoom, I'm on mute. And in person, I would have felt because of a competitive nature, maybe because of just, I want to feel like I'm doing a good job, maybe because I want to feel like I'm contributing or I don't know, maybe because I'm cocky and I've got, I think I got great ideas. I would constantly be like, well, have we thought about doing this? Or what if we right. did this? Or what if right. we did that? Because the way we do it is pretty awesome. And I think that would help you guys. And I used to thought that was the way to do stuff, but I realized that's a core of so much stress and so much you know, emotion and frustration and maybe would build on something, or I would bring my whole self to that meeting in different ways. Maybe I would be angry. Maybe I would do, be mm, tired. Sure. Maybe I'd do whatever and you know, being as, as own, owning as I can of my emotions. Um, but now I'm on mute <laughs> and I, I get to listen to things and, and like, Hmm, yeah, that's a, that's a rough problem. I'm not, uh, I'm not involved. It doesn't involve me. I don't need to insert myself. Uh, and, and I'm, I've just really appreciated that for myself. I'm trying to learn that if, when we, if, and when we do get back to in-person meetings, will I be able to keep myself on mute? It's going to be a new challenge of mine, a new mantra of mine, uh, for, for the in-person. Yeah. It's so hard. It's so hard when you feel like, you know, something better than another person. I like, just do this. It's so easy. Uh, Tell me about it. That's probably been the theme of feedback throughout my career. <laughs> that's for, that's for a, a whole nother conversation. Here. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I love you. I love this oh, conversation. So it fun. is so much fun. Uh, I am totally going to break this up into two episodes because uh, I think that the, the I'm glad the you think some content is usable. <laughs> I was like, hope it's all the of you. this, <laughs> all of this is usable. None of it is being cut out. And I am so thankful for this. And I'm hoping that people find 
one, I'm, I'm biased, right? It was great to catch up with you and see you after so many years, nearly 20 years, and just to see how everything is going. And, and I'm so happy okay. and, and for you, and I'm so proud of you and, and really oh, thankful thank you. for you to not only just be not only just be a great representative of the university, but to be a part of my life and where I started professionally. And, and you'll always kind of yeah. have that spot for me. So thankful, thankful. I'm thankful to you. And, you know, just for, for a quick moment, there's so much that I learned about being a professional from you and Carrie and Jason and Chris, because yeah. I considered you guys like my buddies that I was somehow kind of managing. I basically yeah. learned how to manage from the four of you, uh, to, yeah. to put it as bluntly as possible. And there's been so much growth since then. Then I, but I, I refer back to, I refer back to those conversations and high stakes emotions and projects that we worked on <laughs> consistently to this day about how to work through communication issues, scoping, uh, vision, creativity, editing, all this stuff that we dealt with. And I'm, I'm incredibly thankful, lifelong thankful to everything that you've done for me without knowing it. And so I'm really thankful and thankful for you being here and, and passing on this wisdom to our current students and our prospective students. And I really hope people go through these two episodes because this is this is a big deal. And, and you not cool. only are extremely I'm successful, you're incredibly wise, incredibly oh, wise. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad it was helpful. I, uh, likewise, I think, uh, there are moments you look back on, on life that were, that were pivotal. Right. And so mm -hmm. getting to be a part of, well, we were ESAs back then before we were VSAs. Uh, yeah, there, first time, thing but, like, VSAs back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. But like, like, just like you said, Chris and Carrie and Jason, I haven't talked to Chris or Carrie in a long time, but uh, just kind souls and he, to, how fortunate to have been on the journey for that short period of time with such kind people who, yeah. um, who you learn from, who you can think back fondly on. Uh, it's, it's what a blessing. So uh, yeah. thank you. I really enjoyed talking with you. I hope eventually we can get back to campus and uh, do some do some real things. So one one anyway. of these days, absolutely. Thank you. I'll let you know when this goes out. It'll probably be a couple of weeks. Awesome. All right. Have a great weekend. And we're back. So thank you so much. That was really interesting too about Kristen's side hustle and like how she balances her life. Have you ever done spin? I've done the Peloton before, but never like with other people there. So uh, I have not. Uh, it scares me. And when she yeah. said that she does it, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And and like there, there's multiple, obviously since the pandemic, my neighborhood has like multiple Pelotons. Like there's one yeah. day where I saw multiple being delivered. Um, and now when I go for walks in the neighborhood, you can like hear the instructors yelling yeah. across the thing. And I'm always like, oh, that just doesn't seem for me. Uh, is, is it, is it fun? Like people seem to really dig it who are in yeah. there. My dad is really into it. Actually. I've actually been super impressed with him. He does it like almost every single day. Wow. Like he does really hard rides and he's always like, you know, I was ranked like 50th in the nation today for my <laughs> ride. Um, I didn't realize my dad was so competitive, but I think that the Peloton really like motivates him because there's a global leaderboard. Wow. I think he likes that he's better at it than I am. Okay. Which, yeah, but it, it's fun. And every time I'm home, my parents are like, you should climb less and do the Peloton more. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, it's yeah. that it's that competitive gamification of working out. It it totally gets me. I don't know if it would get me on the yeah. Peloton, but uh, that that just seems awesome. Because my to... dad, like before the Peloton, didn't really like work out as much. Like mm -hmm. he would, but it wasn't as fun for him. But now he does it all the time. It's like this right. big challenge, part of his day. Right. He does it and feels like he like accomplished a lot before he goes to work. Yeah. It's kind of addicting. It's kind of addicting. Mm -hmm. Or at least it's, it's, a, it's a visual indicator of whether you got something done. When you worked out, you just either have pain or soreness, but like, you're like, no, 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 look at there's proof here. And I did this much. I have this, I have this data. Like I did this mm -hmm. much, I did this many miles, this many calories, this many, they whatever. Have like, challenges too. Okay. And yeah, my mom, on the other hand, she just kind of does it for pain, like to just get it done. <laughs> so she'll put on animal planet and then she like barely pays attention to the spin instructor just so she can like get through the class. Got my dad it. finds that really upsetting actually. Oh, cause <laughs> she's not in the ecosystem. Like she's not like engaged. Yeah. He's like, that's not how you're supposed to do the Peloton. You know, it has its own TV. You're supposed to watch that. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like we got to get them on to debate the, the Peloton usage. We got to, we got to, we got to get them on to, to describe it. <laughs> yeah. Now that they're empty nesters, this must be a more common conversation. 
I'm sure some of our listeners would love to hear from empty nester parents. So if you're a parent to have your kids go off to become their own adults and also how you fill that time with the Peloton or anything else <laughs> that you're going to do, let us know, send us an email, put a comment on, on the, uh, on the podcast stream. Uh, you know, all that, all that jazz, let us know. And if we, if we hear from enough for you, then we'll, we'll get the parent interviews going uh, that I think would be really cool. That would be so interesting. I'm just so excited about the podcast we have coming up. Um, my team is awesome. They came up with some really cool stuff. So I'm excited for you guys to hear it. Can you tease a couple episodes that are coming? Just topics, <sighs> broad topics. Well, we have one that is going to be less of an interview and more of a game. Okay. So I'm excited for that one. It'll oh, be a, yeah. yeah, that one. Okay, got it. <laughs> It'll got be it, kind it. of like a mix of people who know how to play the game and people who don't. So I'm super curious fun. how this is going to turn out. This could either be the coolest thing we've ever done or a complete disaster. And that's what makes it exciting. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be really, really interesting. <laughs> and I mean that in the most positive way. Like, I'm super excited about like, well, I don't know what's going to happen with this. I think it's gotten people really excited, though. And we good. have like that's way too many people interested in being on this episode. Oh, well, then sweet. Then this is a good sign. This is a good sign. Yeah, I think it would be fun, though, if we could record it in person just to like be in the recording studio and see everyone okay but that's we'll fine. have to see if that works out yeah that's fine if we could do that let's do that let's awesome. get that set up we can set up we have the the board in my office we'll we'll do that we'll go back to the old school oh yay this is so exciting um okay cool that's gonna be fun uh we have more alumni interviews coming oddly enough mm -hmm. with more 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 employees at apple um yeah <laughs> and, and which is just i think it's a weird coincidence um and it's it's going to be cool. We got some good stuff. Um, we've got more episodes in our database and in our bank, Emily, than we've ever had. You've done such a great job of creating content. We got to release more episodes more faster. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, if you are uh, in our admission process, so looking at the school reminder, common app, it's there, start filling it out. At least start it. Make sure you list USC as a school and make sure you list your first choice major as one of the Viterbi School of Engineering majors. And that's how you do that with, by listing any of the majors that are listed with VSE at the beginning, VSE for Viterbi School mm -hmm. of Engineering. If you ever have any questions or you need any help, do not hesitate to give us a call at 213-600-9919. Again, that's 213-600-9919. Or send us an email at vadmit at usc.edu. Again, that's vadmit at usc.edu. Emily, anything else we need to talk about this week? No, I think that covered it. I'm super pumped. All right. Well, hey, y'all. Thanks for sticking through this. We'll see you next week with another episode of the Turby Voices. Mm -hmm.